Hello, this is Pastor Mark Taylor. Uh, today I'm out uh, by the Savannah River and uh, I wanted to bring you a message today about uh, mountains and valleys. As you can see behind me there's some uh, small mountains or hills and below that is a, a water is water flowing and it's going through valleys. But you know in our life there's a lot of uh, valleys, there's a lot of mountains. Those valleys are usually described as there's difficult times in our lives and, and uh, where we're struggling. In Joel 3.14 it says, uh, multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. And many times we find ourselves in the valleys and we're trying to uh, reach decisions in our lives to, to help us get out of that valley and get on another mountaintop. So Jesus loved the mountains. Uh, often he would go up there to pray. And in Matthew 14.23, uh, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening was come, he was alone there. The Lord Jesus Christ loved the mountains. And in, a, in a, uh, another sense, the mountains are places that we love because of the, those are areas and times in our life where we have uh, had victories, we've had successes, we've reached goals. We get up on that mountaintop and we can uh, see the valley and we can see things more clearly. Uh, the air is fresher uh, and in, in, a, in a sense of uh, our practical lives, we are able to uh, see uh, things a lot better when we're up on the mountaintop versus when we're down in the valley uh, in, in the difficult times of our life. The mountaintop are experiences uh, where we can appreciate uh, all the blessings that we've received and we can appreciate how people have, uh, uh, how loving people are to us and how we've been blessed. And our life should always have the attitude of contentment as far as wherever we are on the valley or in the mountain. Uh, the Bible says that we're to be content with such things as we have. But that does not mean that we're not supposed to, to uh, improve ourselves, so that does not mean that we're supposed to uh, not look at opportunities. But what it's talking about is a mental attitude toward uh, accepting where we are and uh, begin to find ways to, to uh, be appreciative to God for who we are and where we are. You know, you can change a valley into a mountain. And uh, I guess each of us, as we go through that valley, uh, we, we become discouraged and we wonder if we're ever gonna get out of that valley. But you can change it uh, in a couple of ways. You can change it by uh, changing some of the things that are happening in your life. You can also change it by your attitude uh, and how you view that valley. Many times when you're in that valley, it's an opportunity for you to, to find uh, the weaknesses in your life and be able to do things that uh, will improve your skills, uh, will give you an opportunity to uh, find resources that will better you. So the valleys are not always uh, the worst place to be. and. Uh, but while you're there, you need to, to, to evaluate what got you to the valley and begin to plan on your next mountaintop experience. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. So if you're thinking that you're gonna be in the valley, uh, then, then uh, you know, you're going to be there for a longer time. We have to begin to think about uh, things that are positive, things that God has planned for us. Listen to this verse uh, in uh, the uh, in the Bible that talks about uh, in Jeremiah 29:11. It says, "I know my thoughts toward you, and and I know they're not of evil, but I know they're of a hope and future." God is thinking about your future. He's thinking about the next mountaintop you're going to be on. But what is the thing that keeps most of us uh, in the valley? What is the thing that keeps us from rising out of the valley and going to that next uh, mountaintop? Do you realize and, and uh, uh, physically, uh, 
mountains and valleys are connected. In, in, a, phys, in a spiritual sense, uh, in a life sense, our mountains and valleys are also connected. So any time that, that we choose to, we can start walking out of the valley and start walking toward that mountain top. But one of the things that will keep you and me in the valley longer is uh, that uh, verse that I read at the beginning, valley, uh, multitudes and multitudes are in the valley of decision. You got to make a decision to get out of the valley. And one of the things that will keep you in the valley longer than you really want to stay is fear. Fear is, uh, is something that, that keeps us from making decisions about improving ourselves or taking on new uh, endeavors. You know, when you're going toward a mountaintop, you need to have a sensible vision. You need to have a vision of where you're headed. And you need to even take your five senses and begin to visualize that mountain. Visualize how it's going to smell up there. Visualize how it's going to look up there. Visualize uh, uh, touching the rocks and picking up rocks and, and, and putting your feet in the, in the cold mountain stream. Begin to think about that, that mountain top and you'll, you'll have a desire in your heart to, to take those first steps to get out of that valley and go into that, on that mountain top. And same way in a spiritual sense. What is it that, that God has laid on your heart that uh, you see as a mission or you see as an opportunity to serve others? Uh, whatever it is, begin to visualize it. Begin to visualize how you're going to do it. If you're thinking about building a building, uh, visualize the floor plan. Visualize what the outside's going to look. Uh, if you're thinking about uh, uh, improving your, your, your skills in whatever area, whether it's academic or whether it is in, in skill uh, labor, uh, think about taking classes and think about ways of uh, improving your skills. Uh, sensible also means that it's something that uh, is realistic, but you need to make it beyond uh, the whole hum. In other words, Jesus said this in uh, Mark 9, 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So what is it that, that you want to accomplish? What is it, what mountain is facing you that you want to get to the top of? Well, if you can, uh, as a Christian, we have that resource. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God the Father. And, it, and it, He is looking out for our best interest. He is the one trying to, to help us to get out of that valley and get on that mountaintop. Today, is a, uh, we're in that valley of decision, and we need to decide that we're going to head toward that next mountaintop. You, know, you, can get, you can get out of that valley sooner, if you begin to, to manage uh, yourself first. Many times we think about being in the valley as a result of someone else's uh, injustice to us or something that someone else caused us. But if you can begin to see that, that you are in control of your life, uh, you'll be able to get out of that valley quicker. You're the ones that's gonna have to uh, take the first steps. The Bible says in James, uh, the book of James, that uh, faith without works is dead and that you and I need to uh, begin to put feet to our prayers and we need to begin to, to walk by faith and just not by sight. God wants you to be on the mountaintop today and this week I hope you will begin to, to take those first steps. Uh, Jesus went up on the mountaintop alone a lot of times and many times you're going to have to go on that mountaintop alone. Uh, many of us do need encouragement, we need uh, inspiration from other people, but the actual stepping forward and, and moving up that mountain is a result of you doing it alone. And believe me, you will not be alone because Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But you don't have to depend upon other people to reach your mountaintop. Thank you very much, and I hope God blesses you this week, and I hope to see you again soon.